Two months ago, we took a look at the latest update for Questcraft, the unofficial Minecraft Java port for the Quest. However, that was two months ago, and that update fixed a bunch of issues that Meta created that would stop the game from even launching in the first place. However, one month ago, Questcraft released their brand new 3.1.0 update version. And while I didn't want to be releasing Minecraft VR on Quest videos every month, I feel like every two months isn't too bad. So what is up everyone, I'm Mystical, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install the latest Questcraft 3.1.0 update, I'm going to be telling you about the fixes for certain issues that you might be having, and then we're going to check out the game and take a look at the multitude of different features and fixes that they've added into this update. For example, the colors looked a little bit funny to some people, and they fixed that, and apparently this one also has a performance boost. So I'm quite excited to jump into this one, enough blabbering on, let's do it. So first things first, if this is your first time installing Questcraft, this is going to be easy. They've made it super simple since the last update, and you don't even need a PC. If you have an Android phone, that'll do you. So you're going to require the SideQuest app. Whether, again, it's on the PC or on the phone, it doesn't matter. And then you're going to require a Quest with developer mode enabled. You're also going to need a USB Type-C to USB Type-A cable in case you're using a PC, or a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable in case you're using a phone. You can also use an OTG cable if you're using a phone, if your phone doesn't have Type-C, but instead has, say, micro USB. With all that in mind, Let's move on to the easiest method first, the PC. With SideQuest installed on your PC, launch it. Connect your Quest to your computer and accept any dialogues that might show up inside the Quest. These are usually USB debugging dialogues that might show up if it's your first time connecting your Quest to your PC. Once you've accepted all the dialogues, your Quest should show up in the top left of SideQuest. Now make sure that you uninstall any old versions of Questcraft that you might have installed. This is something they recommend doing to avoid any issues in the future. Once you've done that, search up Questcraft inside SideQuest. Click on it and then click Download App Side Load. It's that simple to install the game onto your Quest using a PC. On your phone, it's much of the same. Go onto the Play Store and download SideQuest. Then open up SideQuest, give it all the permissions it might want on your phone, and connect your Quest to your phone. Whether it's using that USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable, or by using a USB OTG cable. Again, make sure all your old versions of Questcraft are uninstalled, search up Questcraft on SideQuest, and then click on it and click install. Wait for SideQuest to tell you that the app is installed, and that's it. It's that simple. There is no need for any fancy APKs installs or anything like that, no more copying files to the headset, that's all been removed since the last update. Now, let me tell you about some of the issues you might be having when you first launch the game, and the potential fixes for them. As I know a ton of you have been having some of these issues, and have been commenting about them in the previous video. Questcraft crashes at login slash download. Update working fix. You can use mobile data through a hotspot to do the process and it should work. If you don't have mobile data, you can also use a different internet connection, not just Wi-Fi, such as a friend's internet connection or Wi-Fi connection. So, you know, you can sneak up beside their house, connect to their Wi-Fi and, uh, you know, just sign in then. And apparently that should fix it. Update. After trying a fix and not having the issue solved here, what you can try is if you have another SIM card, you can try that one as it worked for some people. If that also doesn't work, you can install an older version of Questcraft that shouldn't have the issue. And fabulous graphics quality does currently stop the game from rendering. In case you guys are interested in more fixes, I'm going to leave a link to their Discord. As I said, frequently asked questions and issues are down there, but these are the most frequented questions, especially the login slash download issue. And in case you guys are interested in a performance increase, they have a performance pack, and I also have a video on how to increase performance right up here. So with that being done, let's jump into the headset. Let me show you how to launch the game, how to sign in and then let's check out the performance improvements. Jump into your quest, jump into all apps, up in the top right, choose unknown sources, and then in unknown sources, click on Questcraft. <laughs> you can't you can't make it any harder. <laughs> then once you hop into the game, it's going to ask you to log in to your Microsoft account. Remember, this is Minecraft Java, so you do need to own Minecraft Java and have it migrated to your Microsoft account. So follow this link on any other device or inside your Quest browser and put in the code that it's giving you. This will allow you to connect your Minecraft Java account with Questcraft. And it's much, much easier than having to type in a randomized password and email into the Quest itself. So I do actually really like this new login screen. Once you've logged in, that's it. On the bottom left, you've got all the versions you can choose from and the big 
play button. So let's click play and jump into the game. First time login is going to take a while. This is completely normal, completely standard, and you might be stuck on a black screen for a little while. Just wait, and after a while, it should drop you into the game with the three dots loading and everything like that. Okay, so now we are in the game. Surprisingly, the colors like here in the menu look super washed out, but hopefully that means they're not going to be super washed out in the game itself. So we're going to click on single player and we're going to get ourselves into a world. Now, again, I'm hoping the colors are actually fixed inside the game itself because here they still look super washed out. 100%. Wow, that actually seems to be faster. I could be wrong there, but that did seem to be quite a bit faster. Okay, so the colors in game do seem to be quite a bit better. Also performance right out of the box is also a lot better. Considering I am also recording at the same time, not sure how many of you noticed, but Questcraft now has its own little logo down here. And I think that's really, really cool. They're still a little bit weird. They're definitely better than they were, but they're not exactly right. So if I jump into video settings, you can see here, these are our current settings. I'm going to change this up to bright. I don't see the performance dropping at all. And I like my leaves on fancy. So I'm actually just going to leave them on fancy. First things first, create ourselves a crafting bench. Uh, again, the fact that I can actually play on fancy right now and it's perfectly playable is crazy to me. If I turn fancy off, it becomes even better. I'd say we're just going to build right here, right next to where we spawned. I'll make a ladder and then we'll go down and we're going to build a little house. And that's, that's always what we do in these updates. It always impresses me so much to see performance increase over performance increase. Every update that we check out on this, it's crazy how far this game has come. If you watch the first video we ever made on this, it was nowhere near as solid as it is now. And I just love seeing the increase in performance that we get every time we check it out. I'm fairly sure I saw some copper over there as well. So I'm gonna go grab that now. And as the terrain loads, I just saw it lag a little bit there, but that is just as the terrain loads, which is fairly standard. But the fact that this is running standalone on a quest without a PC at all, guys, this is mobile hardware. The quest is essentially a phone and we're running something that in the past could barely run on certain computers. I mean, this to me still blows my mind. So we would call this reach hex. I call this pure skill. If I can put my hand out further, then I can reach further. I think that's fair game. Now, all they need is full body tracking. Why would you want full body tracking in Minecraft, you ask? Well, I don't actually know how I feel about this. I'd say I'm just gonna go grab more wood. Whoa, where are you? Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah, I can fight you much easier now that you're above. Uh-oh, I'm gonna kill you with my almost broken pickaxe. Okay, I have everything I need and I'm almost dead. So as is, I'm probably better off just staying down here permanently. Now we shall be saved from the monsters. Oh my God, diorite. What, what actually, what can we make from diorite? Is it polished diorite? Let's use polished diorite for the, oh, okay. That's cool. Uh, okay, hacks. <laughs> Now, down here, there also needs to be wood because symmetry. I mean, considering we're doing this in survival, I think we're making good progress. Look at that. I, I say that's pretty good. And just because symmetry. There we go. That's our little house for today. <laughs> Well, first impressions of the new update, I think it came out really, really well. I mean, performance right out of the box is clearly a lot, lot better than it was in the past. And to be completely honest with you, this game is completely playable entirely on Quest standalone. I mean, look how fast everything works now. I will see you guys in the outro. So there you guys go. That's the latest Questcraft 3.1.0 update. They fixed quite a few things in this one that a few people had issues with. And as usual, they're working hard on the next one. Seriously, guys, massive props to the team for actually making this work, making it happen. Meta wouldn't give it to us, so Questcraft took up the task and gave it to us themselves. So massive props, this wouldn't be possible without you. This is literal Minecraft Java running standalone on the quest. I still find that super, super crazy. They also have a server of their own, so in case you want to join that, of course, links to everything are down below, and that is going to be it for today's video. I hope it helped you out, I hope you learned something new, and as usual, I'm Mystical, and I'm signing out. If you guys like this one, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please let me know why down in the comment section below. Thank you so much to the patrons supporting this channel. You guys help me out a ton, paying my bills, paying my subscriptions, and helping me make these videos better. And as usual, if you're not yet part of the community, check out our Discord down below, check out 
Reddit. I want to see you posting your spicy memes on there. And if you want to be notified about your content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.